after that awful news from France tonight um, about the teacher being beheaded, I decided to, um, uh, I uploaded the video and I didn't monetize it partly out of respect for the victim. I just felt a little bit, it was a little inappropriate to monetize that particular one. But also um, YouTube would be funny about it anyway. I decided to look up the group Hope Not Hate. Um, if you don't know, Hope Not Hate is a well-known activist group in the UK that uh, presents itself as um, an anti-racist organisation and an anti-extremism and anti-hate organisation. And it was founded in 2004 by Nick Lyles, who's a journalist and left-wing activist. He's, I understand, worked for The Guardian before. Um, and you know what was the first thing on their thread, their, uh, uh, what you call it, their wall? An article about how such and such percentage of the Conservative Party think Islam is a threat to the British way of life. They had this as their headline, as their main story. And that was posted two hours ago, i.e. within the time frame of when this attack happened. You would think a savage Islamist attack in a neighbouring country uh, would kind of be a priority for an organisation that claims it's against hate. Now, I've just read something which is quite intriguing. Uh, Nick Lyles himself has apparently been no platformed by, as he called it, ultra left wing students for his Islamophobia, which is incredible because apparently he has personally spoken out against um, Islamic extremism and uh, grooming gangs. If he has, I give him credit for that. But I'm afraid it's not enough for me to change my views on his organisation. Because I think, take Facebook for example, you know, organisations are judged by their activity, right? Uh, what they post on a public forum like Facebook gives you an indication of what they're all about. Not just Facebook, but in other mediums too. And the fact of the matter is that when it comes to far right extremism, you know, start speaking out against white nationalist groups and the like, I uh, hope not hate, um, have been good at that. They have been very vocal and they have uh, taken on that sort of ideology. Great. Um, anyone who knows me knows full well, or even anyone who follows the channel significant time knows full well what I think of the likes of um, Britain First and the EDL and particularly some ultra neo-Nazi organisations like Combat 18. They're vile extremists and they need to be challenged. So I will give Hope Not Hate credit for that. What I have a big problem with, with Hope Not Hate, and people might wonder why am I making this? Well, because Hope Not Hate is one of the most prominent organisations of its kind in the UK. So what their position is matters because they have influence. You know, um, the Labour Party is very cosy with them. So I do think it matters. Um, and I'm afraid when it comes to Islamic extremism, for the most part, Hope Not Hate is deafeningly silent. You know, of course, they will condemn terrorist attacks in this country. Uh, apparently, it doesn't matter if it happens in a neighbouring country if it's by Islamic extremists. Um, but only in a generic term, like we're against extremism, we condemn violence. Yet, like a lot of uh, regressives in this area, and by regressive, I mean those who are reluctant to criticise Islamic extremism, what they will do is they'll be very clear and very concise and very specific when it comes to ultra-nationalist or white supremacist or far-right extremism. But when it comes to Islamic extremism, they're vague. They'll be like, oh yeah, violence is terrible, we're against it. So they won't actively support it, of course they won't do that. And I don't think they actually ideologically sympathise with Islamic thinking. But hope not hate are guilty of um, inconsistency. And for an organisation like that, I find that unforgivable, frankly. If you are a public organisation and you're saying that you're all about combating hate and extremism, it's just not good enough to only focus on one side and completely ignore the other. And there is a track record with this. 
hope not hate will never vocally condemn, certainly not by name, um, extremism. So Nick Lyles personally may have done so. His organisation hasn't. It just hasn't. And I suspect this is, I mean, it's incredible. This is how ridiculous the left can be sometimes, where th they turn on each other. So a guy who's clearly pretty left wing isn't left enough for them. I mean, my goodness, I'm critical of him and his organization. Even he's an Islamophobe. So the people calling him an Islamophobe, there's, you know, I don't even know where to get through to their mentality. I have to say, maybe it's a little bit of, uh, I don't use the term karma, but, you know, maybe for Nick Lowell to be called an Islamophobe, this was in 2016, gives him an idea of when his organization tries to silence critics by accusing them of dog whistling to the far right and so on. They do mostly go against genuinely vile organisations. But I think but Hope Not Hate is the sort of group that would smear someone like me as an Islamophobe and a hater and a fascist. Because they cannot abide anyone challenging them. And they put on this big cloak of, oh, we're, we're progressive, we're anti-racist. You know, look how great we are. We're standing up to these skinhead thugs and so on. Fine. But why not stand up to Islamist thugs vocally? It's not enough for your leader to maybe say that privately or, you know, that's his own views. As an organisation, I contend that Hope Not Hate has utterly, utterly failed to vocally recognise and condemn, condemn Islamic extremism. And let's be clear here. The violence is the most pronounced form of it. But it's misogyny. It's extreme misogyny, it's homophobia, it's anti-Semitism, it's um, supremacy. You know, Islamism is a very, very hateful ideology, very. So an organisation that models itself on being against hate should be at the forefront, absolute forefront of tackling Islamic extremism. But they're not. You know, they should be actively campaigning against Islamic extremism. They don't. They'll make the occasional generic condemnation. I'm sorry, but I've seen no evidence that this is an organization that really cares about Islamic extremism. Because if they did, they would be a lot more vocal about it. Let's look at the facts. If we look at every terrorist attack, certainly in Britain, but even in Western Europe, Europe for that matter, in recent years, let's say the last 20 years, um, more people have died from Islamic extremism than from far-right extremism. In the case of the UK, it works out at um, including the Manchester bombing, the Westminster attack, the London Bridge attack, and other smaller attacks. Uh, well over um, 30 people have been killed. Hundreds have been injured. Okay, that's just in the last... Uh, well, wait a second, what am I talking about? It's a lot more than that, because if I'm talking 20 years, 7-7. Um, seven, seven. So 52 killed in 7-7. Seven, seven. 22 killed in Manchester. We're talking almost 100 people killed from Islamist extremism in this country. Hundreds more wounded. Probably many more suffering PTSD and related mental health problems. Um, now, if we look at uh, far-right extremism, there's a few examples, such as the murder of the uh, Mohammed Salim, uh, the elderly man in Birmingham, by a far-right extremist. Uh, there's a parts on screen attack. Uh, um, Excuse me, the Finsbury Mosque attack, the Parsons Green attack, the Islamist attack. Um, so you will get some examples of far right extremism, and we do see evidence that the young people are being increasingly groomed by these fanatics. But in terms of actual, I hate to put it this way, but body count, unfortunately, um, we do see that there is a lot more people being killed from Islamic attacks in Britain in recent years than far right attacks. That's just a fact. And with slightly different in other countries in Norway, obviously the glaring example there is the attacks of 2011, which is the worst example of far-right extremism in Europe in modern times. But the worst terrorist attacks in Europe in modern times were both Islamist, the Madrid bombing in 2004 and the Paris attack of 2015, the big Paris attack. Um, France has had so many Islamist attacks, I've honestly lost count. So... I really, really have a problem with an organisation that pretends to be against hate, but they are silent. They really are silent. 
when it comes to Islamic extremism. You know, when do they ever have a post saying, let's, uh, you know, help or um, get involved with de-radicalizing young Muslims? Why is that any less of a problem than de-radicalizing uh, young men who might be, um, it's mostly men, who might be involved in far-right groups? It's a hypocrisy of Hope Not Here I really have a problem with. And the fact that they are willing to smear anyone who questions them as a racist. I mean, this post that they had was about the Conservative Party, the government, right? But that wasn't even about some underground skinhead group. It was the government they're talking about. In their mind, Boris Johnson is a fascist. Our Prime Minister, a man elected by millions of people. Um, that's the way Hope Not Hate thinks. And, you know, left-wing organisations like Hope Not Hate are very good at saying so-and-so is doing the dog whistle if they talk about Islamic extremism. Um, so really, I, I think the charlatans, I don't have any time for this organisation. And I would simply say to people, it's up to you whether you support them or not. But if you, um, like me, have a problem with racism and want nothing to do with the far right and believe they need to be challenged, but you also recognise that Islamism is a real problem in our society. Hope Not Hate is an organisation that has no evidence of really doing anything about it. So they're just hypocrites. It's as simple as that. And if I'm wrong about this, if you're like a member of Hope Not Hate, it's, oh, no, no, you're wrong. Prove it wrong, right? Send a link. I'll try and enable that if I can, um, or even make a counter video, whatever, um, and show me Hope Not Hate clearly, unequivocally recognising and condemning Islamic extremism. And I'm not talking about, oh, we condemn the Manchester bombing, it was awful. I'm talking about specifically naming the ideology as they do with the far right because i think it'll be a challenge i don't think there's much evidence of this organization doing that and frankly it infuriates me because the same people have no problem smearing others as racists you know um they would smear me as a racist simply for making this video i think at their core there's not very much progressive about them yes they have a good record when it comes to tackling the far right it for that but i i cannot respect an organization that isn't consistent and it isn't the hope not hate either put up or shut up when it comes to extremism because i'm sorry you're hypocrites you're hypocrites them all extremism or you know your words are meaningless uh, or at least say we are an anti-far right organization don't call yourself hope not hate when you're going to ignore some kinds of hate really infuriating actually that's how i see it and if you're offended by this or i'll put it another way if you think the religious sensitivities and questioning islam is a bigger issue a bigger priority than um condemning islamic extremism you really need your priorities right i mean this report about the tories i'll close on this it's a 60 percent of conservative members apparently um, or conservative MPs think Islam is incompatible with uh, with Britain, with British life. Well, that question really needs to be looked at in more detail. If conservative MPs, conservative members, think that certain Islamic ideals and ideology is incompatible with British life, they're absolutely correct. Anyone who believes in democracy and human rights and liberty can clearly see that. The greatest tragedy when it comes to Islamic extremism is is the, the facade of liberalism, the facade of so-called liberals and progressives who really are nothing of the sort because they're silent and their moral part it speaks volumes. And it would be okay to just ignore them and say, well, they don't matter if they weren't actively trying to destroy other people. You know, if I was a public figure, they would be going out of their way to destroy me. They'd say, oh, Nathan's pandering to the far right. You know, this guy, Nathan, here's what he's far right. This dog whistle. It's frankly despicable and it's pathetic.